So here's a very popular power supply from around the 1981 era, the Bremi BRS27 from Italy. Uh, this is the late version, we can tell it's the late version because it's got the three core mains lead. Um, I've bought this off eBay, I don't know what I paid, it be less than a tenner, I wouldn't have bought it, especially in this state. So if it's got the three core mains lead, it's the late version, and if it's got the two core mains lead, so it's not earthed, um, obviously we'd be needing to upgrade that with an earth. And I think we've got a, a 10 amp Bremi somewhere, uh, which I'll be showing you uh, how to do that on a future video. Now these these are very reliable, and they were always a bit more expensive than some of the cheaper ones. But um, well, that was an illogical thing to say, of course they were. They, these were sold as a premium product. And this version, uh, you can see the output transistor through with the ventilation there. It's a powder coated, coated case, it's not just painted. And I always thought they are quite nice power supplies. So I'm going to open this one up and we'll do some capacitor changes and we'll see how it works. We'll also put a plug on it with a 3 amp fuse. Okay, the next day after we started the video, when I opened up the case, it was absolutely so full of muck that I decided to put the whole thing through the company dishwasher. Don't do that at home. I dry these things very carefully in an air-conditioned environment so the moisture is sucked out. But it's better when it's a bit cleaner for demonstration purposes. So, what you've got is a capacitor there which we're going to change. A capacitor there which we're going to change. I'll tell you what the values are later. Now it's based, you see it's got a full wave bridge rectifier which look like 3 amp diodes. You've got an adjustment there for the, um, for the output voltage. And a chip there, which is, um, are there 10 legs there? Or 16 legs or something, I can't remember. It's an L123. Now, L123s are a bit few and far between. And they were few and far between, even in the 1980s when these were on the market. In actual fact, they're an alternative version to the 723 voltage regulator. The 723. So LM723 would be one make. Uh, UA723 would be another make and it looks like a TO5 transistor with a heat sink on. I think they call it TO100 when it's uh, like that. So it's a metal can with a lot of legs and if you get a malfunction like a capacitor blowing it will always take the chip out. So that's just the point. It's an L The L123 is replaced by a 723 which are readily available and before I uh, uh, started this recording just now I did just look on eBay and somebody was selling two for £1.50 brand new plus postage so they're not the end of the world they're cheaper now than they were at the time so what I'm going to do I'm on Mr Chippy's bench by the way this isn't my bench it's Mr Chippy's bench we were going to do this yesterday and um, he's uh, he, he comes at weekends and, and does some work here and he's gone back to sunny Bradford. And uh, we had a snag yesterday. I've got a relative in Sheffield who's 91. And um, his uh, fridge ceased to function. So I, I ordered him a new fridge and uh, and took a temporary one out there. Uh, and so it kind of lost the afternoon. So that's why I'm doing this and not Mr Chippy. Because normally Mr Chippy is poking inside and, uh, and losing tools in the live works. So I'll take that apart. We'll change the capacitors and I'll be back in to record. Right, so I've now been busy changing those capacitors and the small one is printed on the board as being 100 microfarads at 16 volts. Now that's no good at all because um, I think that's really from the time when they were um, the earlier version and I wouldn't want to see capacitors in there under 35 volts to be quite honest. Now the one which has come out is at 63 volt rating and the one we've put in, Royal We, I've put in, is also 63 volt rating. But had I had a 35 volt one in stock, I would have fitted that. Now the other capacitor we've taken out is 2200 microfarads at 25 volts. That is too low. But if anything goes wrong and it rises to about 30 volts, those capacitors will pop. As I took that out, there was debris from the innards of a capacitor. So it tells me 
but that's why that is 163 because that's previously popped and somebody's changed it at some time so that probably worked I'm not here to test them I just change them they're that cheap so we've got 100 microfarads at 63 volts there and we've got 2200 microfarads at 35 volts there so that's upgraded that to what I believe it should be now you'll notice I've put what they call a radial electrolytic capacitor there and what's come out is an axial it's quite simply because I haven't got those in stock so just for this um, it's, it's not a bodge it's done properly and it does fit okay but um, nevertheless I would have put an axial in had I had one so that's a radial one that's gone in so now for the moment of truth I'm going to connect it up right folks well it's all back together and when I powered it up having put it back together the first time I was greeted with nothing so I checked the mains going into the unit and there was no mains going into the unit and what I found was that where the cable grommet on the back of the unit is where the cable goes in just there that's the old cable and in actual fact the cable is snapped and you can just see that it is indeed snapped so we've changed the mains lead throw that in the vertical filing cabinet I did just have to adjust the voltage, I turned powered it up and it was 14.5 volts so the preset there I've just backed it off to produce 13.8 so I'll just show you that on the meter 13.7 usual 21 watt car light bulb in that packet there so plug that in so that's 2 amp load and just put those in such a way that we can get the uh, test meter on as well 13.7 so that will do nicely so there we have it the Bremi BRS27 lives again thank you for watching and I hope that's been helpful to you